Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today we're going to make book sleeves. Now I'm calling them book sleeves. They can truly be anything you want, any type of an envelope to protect. You can make one for your iPad. You can make one for your Kindle, a book, anything really, any type of tablet. Um, you can also use them for like craft projects, project bag. They're great. Coconut. Caribbean coconut coffee. What? Aldi. I had to run in. I needed a couple supplies and it was on clearance because they're clearancing out all their Easter stuff. Everybody's clearancing out their Easter. Sorry. I have lint on my glasses. All right. We are going to do this. So what I need, I have some thread nips. I'm using a sewing machine. Scissors. These are fabric scissors. I'm cutting mine with the rotary cutter. If you have that, it's great. It's easy. If not, a piece of paper to make your pattern and scissors. It works fine. Now, I am using this as my guide, this book. I haven't finished it yet. It's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, this is my guide. The book itself is pretty thick. So, we decided, Sarah and I, um, Sarah's my niece. I have to say that because I get lots of questions. Sarah and I love to read and we take our books with us. And she asked if I would make her this. And I said, girl, you know, I'll make you anything, anything. And it's true. So perfect. Now I made some masks video last week. And one of my friends that I made masks for dropped some fabric off. And I knew Sarah would love this. Look at that fun fabric. She loves teal. And then I'm going to do the inside with a little lighter blue. So what you'll need, material-wise again, where's it at? I forgot this part. Okay, a lot of the videos I was watching how to do this, they were using foam, which I think is bizarre, but, you know, whatever. Sorry, I have a mess over behind me. They were using foam. I'm not sure why, but whatever it makes it more padded I guess um and a spray adhesive that just sounds messy to me but I have at home this is called fusible fleece it comes in different weights this would probably be a mid weight you get this at Joanne it's on the bolt by the yard and the back is like a polyester padded and the front or one side I suppose has glue bumps it's literally just dots of glue and you iron it on and the glue heats up and it melts and then it's, it um, adheres to your fabric. I cut mine nine by 11, my squares. I made two of the lining fabric and I'm not lining them. Although you could, you could line the inside and outside, but I think that'll be a little overkill. And then I cut two of the outside fabric and I fuse this and I will insert here. All right, this is how we're gonna attach the fusible fleece, okay? You got a bumpy side and a smooth side. The bumpy side is our adhesive. So that's gonna go face up. You don't wanna iron on this. You will ruin your iron and you will melt this. So you always wanna have the iron and the heat on the fabric. So it's very important that you line up your corners, right? And if you need to cut your um, fleece a little shorter, do that to ensure that you will not iron it. But I got mine good. Now, I have this set on cotton linen. And instead of sliding it, at first you really just want to set it. What we're trying to do is melt the adhesive and fuse it to the fabric. If you over melt it, you ruin the adhesive. Now that it has stuck, I can slide it back and forth. You just want to make sure that it sticks. And what this does is it's giving us that stability that we want and some padding for our books. And that is it. That's all you do. This, I use this technique for multiple, multiple things, but now it's attached. You can flip it over if I see any place that it might have bubbles or it's not attached. I 
everything oops, like right here. I'll just go over it one more time. But it's super quick. You buy this in the craft store by the bolt on the bolt by the yard or half yard. All right, so let's get busy. So the next thing you'll need is pins on my black cat or quilters clips. I think they're wonder clips. I don't know. I use them. I love them. Um, and your sewing machine. I don't know that I would do this by hand, although I guess you could. So that's everything. Actually, yeah, that's everything. Let me change your direction now and I will show you how we're going to sew because that's it. That's it. Cut, iron, sew, and it's basic. I'm not putting zippers in these, but you can, and I will make future ones with zips, but I wanted to see how they worked without. I'm afraid of zipping and hurting the book. So one moment. Everybody has been attached. I have my two front pieces and my two inside pieces. And what we're gonna make right now is a long piece of fabric together. So the first step, you want to include and in, attach right sides together a front piece and a liner and we're going to do a quick seam right down the front that is step one and I'm making two because I need one too and if you're new to sewing this is a great beginner project I hope you can see what I'm doing down here. I need to get a better setup. I have white thread. I have it on a three, which is a, just a basic stitch. And I have my needle placed in the center. And I'm going to go with three eighths inch seam allowance because that's really all I need. And you always want to lock your stitch. So that just means forward and backwards. Ah. Forward, back, forward, back. And I line it up with the foot, with the edge of my heat, of my presser foot. Okay, that's it. One seam. And if you don't know, on your sewing machine, and I'm pretty sure every sewing machine, even if it just does a straight stitch, has a back stitch. Mine's up here, it's a button, and it makes it go backwards. And that's how you lock your stitch. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards. The second step, so we have in the first part of the line, our outside fabric with the padding. Then we have a piece of inside fabric. Now we're gonna do a second piece of inside fabric. Right? However, on this piece, I'm gonna leave my opening because this is how I'm gonna flip it inside out. Okay? So I'm gonna sew I'll mark it with a pin for us. I'm just going to leave a decent size opening. So I'll sew to here and you want to do a front back, front back to here. And then I'll just leave an opening. There's no magic. You just got to kind of gauge how you're going to turn it inside out. Right. And then over here, I'm going to stitch it here. Because then this gets put down into the middle, right? All right, give me a second. I want to get my other side caught up, my other piece caught up. All right, here's something I want to show you. When you're dealing with directional fabric, so on the one that I'm doing, this is owls with owls, and the outside is owls. You want to make sure everybody is in the right direction. So this is going to be the front or back, it doesn't matter, up right so I lay it down heads up with the directional fabric you want to do the same uh, right sides together so the sides with the print heads facing up eventually this is going to flip and become our lining and you want those to be heads up and so that way we have two sets of directional fabric just a little saving time saver if you buy a fabric that definitely has an up and a down the other fabric for sarah does not but mine does so i want to make sure 
that I have everybody facing in the right direction because I can't tell you how many times I have had to unpick something <laughs> to flip it. Now we're going to sew up to the pins and backstitch. And remember, that needs to be strong because that's where we're gonna flip it when it's time. We are sewing this inside out so all of our seams are hidden. Back, back it up. Now when you get close to your needle, you pull it. You don't wanna sew over your pins. It's not good for your sewing machine or the stitch. Now all I do is lift and pull, and I'm gonna come over here to this pin, drop my foot, pull my pin. I'll cut those threads after. And that's it. So then you cut your thread here. And you know, you've seen me sew a hundred times. I'm a thread snipper. And then here and here. Just cutting all the little threads so they're not in my way. And then now, the next piece as soon as I find it. Oh, no, that is the next piece. The next piece is going to be uh, the front again. Now, if you notice, this fabric sort of does have an up and a down. Like these are definitely going in a different direction and I want them to be the same for her. So this is my up. So I guess it is a directional fabric. Is it a big deal? No. But over here, you want to make sure whichever side you want up um, becomes your up. It drives me nuts when I see fab patterns of fabrics that are made commercially, you know, like products, shirts and stuff, that they don't take the time to make the directional fabric correct. And if you want to test it, just flip it. And we know that's the right side. So now we're gonna stitch this last piece and our big long line of fabric is done. It's very bizarre to me sewing on this plastic table and not my craft table, but it's okay. I'm not moving my office. And another straight line. Kids could do this so easy. And I know some kids are using it as like an Etsy thing and selling them. There's so much fun fabric out there. Now, if you want to get a little fancy, which I will in my next couple, I'm going to put zippers in a pocket maybe for her to keep your journal in and stuff. Okay. So here we have, I'm just moving things out of the way. We have a sandwich. This is gonna be our outside, inside, inside, outside. That's all you have to do. So I'm piece end to end. And if you wanna make your life easier at first, get some solid color fabric. Then you don't have to worry about directions. The one thing we want to do is line up the outside seams at the bottom and the top. You could pin this, Ooh, sorry. I'm not, I'm going to clip it. I love these clips, I need to get some more. And then I'm gonna clip this one here. It's just the inside you're not gonna see necessarily if your inside linings don't line up, but on the outside you will notice. So we wanna make it pretty. And then I'm just clipping and I'm gonna clip here. Now all we're gonna do, it's two seams. We're gonna sew from top to bottom all the way straight. From here, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then do the other side. That easy. I'm not kidding you when I told you how easy this was. Same seam allowance and the same lock your stitch. You always wanna lock your stitch when you're doing sewing like this. Just making sure my piece, my lining was a little off down here, which is fine. And 
my back stitch did. And that side is done. Now there was a little extra, it's totally okay. I could make this a flat bottom bag that will give her some extra room. And before I close it up and do all that, we're gonna see if we wanna do it. But right now I'm just doing the side seams. Um, sometimes you'll get a little stretch with this fleece, but I didn't this time, it just does. Okay. Done. Right? Now, we're going to flip it. Here's one thing. I'm going to raise you up so you can see. So we have everybody sewed. Right? Oh, I forgot one seam. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? I forgot the bottom seam. Sorry, one more seam. I was like, that didn't look right, guys. I will fix it. you can do while you're stitching thicker fabric like this you can lengthen your stitch length over here to like a four or five I, I didn't think it was necessary but it depends how thick your fleece is okay now <laughs> I have all my seams sewed I'm gonna go in and cut these corners um, just so, for the bulk um, just took a little nip off you don't really want them you don't want to cut your corner threads remember that you just want to cut up to the stitch line. Oh, there we go. So I got it snipped. So we have a pocket here, right? Outside, uh, this is the front. This is the lining. But I left this hole. So I'm going to reach in. And we're going to turn it inside out. That's how easy this is. Just flip it. And so if you don't get all your little floss your threads nipped that's fine but on the outside you want to snip any if you start pulling threads like ripping threads you're going to end up ripping seams is what's going to happen okay look at that now i'm going to stick my hand in here so that's kind of how big you want to make it and i'm going to pop out my corners and make them nice and crisp you could use a bone folder a chopstick I think my fingernails will be fine on this one. It's pretty bulky in here, so. And if you're too rough on your corners, you're gonna end up popping seams. So there's that, right? The one thing you want to do is iron it. Iron it flat. Ironing it makes everything better. And then when you get it ironed, we're also gonna tuck our lining in, right? Um, I could leave it, and I think I will leave it. You see on my line, how there's a little bit of the inside fabric on the top? I think that is adorable, and it works fine. There's plenty of room in here. If not, trim it. But look at this. I'm gonna go iron it, and then I will show you how we're gonna top seal it. Got it flipped inside out. The last step, or one of the second to last step, I ironed the inside flat. Here's my opening. We're just gonna do a nice little stitch across the bottom. You can hand sew this, but honestly, it goes on the inside of a book bag. Why do that? So I'm lining up my side here, but I moved my needle over to get a smaller seam at the bottom. Now, I did try my book. It's a little big for these bags, um, but I made it to the size Sarah asked me to make her, so we're fine. Um, but I can make them bigger. The thicker the book, obviously the bigger. We're going to need it. Um, so then you just tuck it back inside. You can iron it again. I'll iron the whole thing. Ironing helps immensely between each step. 
to get everything um, lined up where it needs to be. And then I need to press this one as well, but I'll do this one after. This one was pressed. The bottom is where it needs to be. I'm going to pull it in. I decided I would give myself just that little bit of extra um, internal room. So I am not going to leave the top fabric hanging out. So I'm going to iron that down. Perfect. And then we'll be back to stitch. Last step. So I pressed this. So the lining is down and this top stitching, what it's going to do is keep the lining from creeping out. Um, the one thing I have on mine is that I can remove this deck and then I have a smaller surface that I can iron or iron. I can stitch on. And because I have a lot of fabric, I'm going to go up to a four stitch length, but you don't have to. It's just what I'm choosing to do. Um, I start on a side seam, line it up with my end. I have my needle over as far as it will go. I made sure everything was good. And then I'm going to lock it and then I'm going to go. Now, when you're going over thicker seams, you really just want to kind of help it along. And then I'm just feeding it through nice and smooth. And it's okay if a little bit of the interior lining pops out. We don't, we're not that fussy around here. But the more practice you get doing these, the better it will look. Also, my sewing machine is bouncing because it's a plastic table. And then you come right back to where you started. I'll show you one more time. So I'll do the other one. And then I'm just going to clip these threads. Just always want to make sure you clip your threads. That is important to make it look tidy and clean, but also to keep it protected. And then I'll do one last iron on here just to make everything look good. But let's show you on the second one how easy and quick this is. So you slide it in. Now, if your sewing machine doesn't have an arm like this, you just have to kind of fuss with it a little bit. It will, it'll do it. You just got to make it. Forward, back, and then forward. And when you go over the bumps, you just kind of got to push it or pull it a little bit. easy was that I'm gonna press them just so that everything and pressing also helps lock your um, thread stitches but let me press them and I will show you the finished product all right they're done how easy was that and they're very sturdy and they're padded and they're lined and they're stable and how fun would these be to personalize for a gift if you had a Cricut or some iron-on or purchase an iron-on, you could sew a book bag, get a book for the gift, and then put personalize it on the outside. Their name, what the name of the book, a journal, a saying, I mean anything really. Could personalize these. We could add a zipper. I think when I make another one, I'm going to flatten the bottoms. So I'll have to give myself more room to do that. But look what it does. It makes it more of a bag than a sleeve. So for thicker books... Um, sorry, my, I'm so itchy. Is everybody else super dry right now? Um, if you flat, if you do this, we'll show you how to do it, but, um, it gives you side gussets, but it also makes it more of a sleeve and you can personalize it for gifts. And that's Sarah's. And this is the one I made for me with the owls. I've had this fabric forever and now I'm glad I used it. And then the owls are on the inside and that little bit of detail, the owls are all facing in the right direction. So. Let's see if my book will fit. I mean, I know it will fit, but will it fit how I like it? I don't know. No, I'd have to give myself, it fits perfect in here. I would give myself a little more room. I'm gonna sneeze. 
<laughs> no, I'm not going to sneeze. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You see this? If you sew, and I'll have to do another one, but if you sew it inside before, it fits perfectly, but you got to give yourself more room. But it fits. The book is in here. Um, I would like it for this particular book a little taller just to protect my book. But here is a book sleeve for you to use for yourself or to gift. I hope you enjoy. Have a good one, guys. Bye.